It was one of the biggest funerals ever in this country, given the status of a state funeral, before there was even an Irish state. But who exactly was O'Donovan Rossa? Jeremiah O'Donovan Rossa was one of the most famous Fenians of the 19th and early 20th century. He was seen as a very informative individual on the Irish question, and he was very much so committed to the idea of an independent Irish Republic. He uh, became, in effect, the father of Irish republicanism, uh, and that status was reflected in the enormous turnout at his funeral in Glasnevin Cemetery on the 1st of August of 1915. From the family members that I've talked to here in the United States, mostly, uh, there is an understanding of him as a, a real Irish hero, and maybe one that hasn't really been appreciated. Born in 1831 in West Cork to an Irish-speaking family, Early on, he experienced the famine firsthand. He lost his father to the famine. He lost his family to immigration. His mother and all his sisters uh, emigrated. Uh, he saw a large number of his friends die horribly. Um, and the memory of the famine and, and the belief that the British government was responsible and in some respects perhaps in his own mind actively sought the famine uh, was something that remained with him to the end of his days and to a large extent informed the, the simple hatred he had for the British government. He founded the Phoenix National and Literary Society, a cover for the Fenian movement. Convicted of treason felony, he was sentenced to life in prison. His own writings detail some of the tough punishments in jail. He was put on punishments such as bread and water diet. But ultimately, the most famous or notorious form of punishment was he was, had his hands manacled behind his back for 35 days, almost continuously. In 1871, there was an amnesty for prisoners. He had to leave the UK and was exiled to the United States. There, he helped mastermind the dynamite campaign. This is the first modern terrorist campaign within British history. They'll attack targets such as Pall Mall. They'll attack Scotland Yard. The reason why we have new Scotland Yard today is because the Fenians, they blew up old Scotland Yard. Jeremiah O'Donovan Rossa is both the mastermind for this dynamite campaign, and he's also the spokesperson for the dynamitards from America. By the time he died in 1915, he'd had three wives and 18 children. His widow agreed with plans made in Ireland to bring his body home. Almost immediately, it's recognised within uh, the IRB in Ireland that this is a heaven sent opportunity for a propaganda coup. The organising committee for the funeral encompassed all seven signatories of the 1916 proclamation. It also encompassed more of those who were executed in 1916. Thousands came to see him lying in state at City Hall in Dublin. Thousands more lined the streets for his final journey to Glasnevin Cemetery. It was a huge event and a really a show of force when you think about it. The idea behind the funeral itself was that it would be a huge public act of defiance against British rule, uh, that it would really give warning of um, immediate action in the near future. That warning reinforced with the words delivered at the graveside oration by a then little known school teacher named Porrick Pierce. They think they have foreseen everything. They think they have provided against everything. But the fools, the fools, the fools, they have left us our Fenian dead. And while Ireland holds these graves, Ireland unfree shall never be at peace. The O'Donovan Rossa funeral was, without question, the single biggest act of collective defiance of uh, British authority during the uh, year or so leading up to the Rising. We see essentially a pathway opening up towards the 1916 Rising uh, beside that grave, which of course would change the history of this country forever.